What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be for Bellator 259 Cyborg versus Smith. Um, and let's get right into the card here, man. We got Alexander Shabley coming up against Alfie Davis at lightweight. So uh, Shabley is 19-3. and three. Um, He's on a four-fight win streak. A bit of a layoff. He hasn't fought since 2019. But, you know, some good fights there at uh, Fight Nights Global and ACB. You guys know that uh, as far as regional promotions go, I love those Russian ones, man. Uh, some good competition over there. Um, I'd say that uh, Shabby probably packs a little more power than Alfie Davis does. Um, I just think he's a little bit more complete of a fighter. Um, one of his wins was against Adriano Martins, and uh, that guy is better known as uh, the one in uh, Islam Makhachev's 19-1 and record. Um, he knocked out Makhachev in the first round in the UFC. You know, Martins had a pretty good UFC and, and strike force career, but you know, maybe it's safe to say he was a little bit past his prime by the time he fought Shabley, but, uh, you know, still, that's a nice win and kind of stuck out to me. Um, and, you know, Shabley, he's got good defense on the feet, and uh, Alfie Davis, you know, he does have a bunch of Bellator fights. He has been more active recently. He is also on a four-fight win streak. All four of those wins came on Bellator, um, and his loss before that streak started was on KSW. So, you know, he has fought on good promotions, right? KSW, Bellator, those are great promotions. Um, but he just hasn't fought the best competition. Um, I do like the kick arsenal that he has. I feel like Davis has some pretty good kicks. Um, he's got some nice flashy strikes that he throws, but... Um, I just think Shabley's the better and more complete fighter here. Um, I think he should get the win. I think he's the better all-around game. Um, he has been off for a little while. You know, I like that activity from Davis, but I just don't think Davis is going to be able to get it done. I'm going to go with Alexander Shabley, man. Um, moving on to Brett Johns and Danny Savatello at Bantamweight. And I'm just going to say, man, how is this card? The, like, I don't know if the fight order is correct here, but like, man, Brett Johns is the second fight on the card, man. That's a big, you know, that's a big fight. Um, I'm a big Brett Johns fan, so I might be extremely biased here. <laughs> we'll see what you guys think. Um, you know, Brett Johns is 17 and two, um, excellent grappler, excellent wrestler, um, very successful uh, UFC stint. You know, when went, went out on a nice win over Montel Jackson, chose to uh, you know get some bread, go over to Bellator. Man, Scott Coker dropped the bag on him, so. You know, I'm excited to see his debut here. His losses came to Pedro Munoz and uh, Aljamain Sterling. So not really bad losses, man. Um, he has had a longer camp for this fight. Uh, he was supposed to fight someone else, but it fell through. And, you know, this is really exciting for uh, for Bellator to get Brett Johns, man. As soon as I saw he was on Brett Bellator, I was like, wow. You know, I was excited about him as a UFC prospect. I'm really excited about him as a Bellator prospect. Um, Danny Sabatello, man, another good... Uh, rising prospect, though I like what I've seen out of Danny Sabatello. He is ten and one, but you know he's coming out of here on short notice, uh, fighting out of ATT on a four-fight win streak. His only loss in his career was to Irwin Rivera. Um, he had a nice win over Taylor Moore on Dana White's Contender Series. Had a nice win over Demond Blackshear on Titan FC. Man, that was a nice one. Um, he's a really good grappler and he's a pretty well-rounded guy. Um, but to be honest with you guys, I do like Johns in this spot. I think that he's the better fighter, and I predict that he's going to be having a successful debut. Um, I think that he definitely can hold his own on the feed, and you know that just relentless grappling. I just like Brett Johns. I really like his game um, in general. I am a, a big fan of him, though, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. Maybe if a lot of people think that Sabatello is going to come in and get it done, but I don't know, guys. Just Sabatella coming in short notice against Brett Johns, who's a really good guy. He's known about this date for a while, and uh, he definitely wants to make a strong showing in his debut. So I'm going with Brett Johns here. I feel like he's the play. Moving on to Liam Accord versus Janae Harding at women's featherweight. So, uh, uh, yeah, Liam Accord is 4-1. and one. Um, He lost her... F he <laughs> She, excuse me, um, lost her first pro fight. Um, and uh, after that, it's been four straight wins. She beat Manon Fioro on uh, Cage Warriors. That's a really nice win. I'm actually pretty high on uh, Manon Fioro. I think she's very promising. Um, I really liked her last performance in the UFC. And uh, it didn't hurt that I made some money on her in that one. So, uh, you know, that, that warms me up to her a little bit. Anyways, uh, Liam McCourt, uh, that's a nice win. And I think that's probably the best win she's had in her five pro fights. Um, you know, she had three wins after that on Bellator. And in matchups where I felt like she was was pretty clearly the better fighter. I think this is going to be a tougher test against Harding here. Um, and, you know, McCord is an okay boxer. She got decent feints. 
Um, I find she is really strong. She has good reversals, tight body locks, nice hip tosses, nice single legs. Um, she looks to, uh, to advance and pass on the ground. She's got a nice front kick to keep the distance. Um, just her striking defense, though, is what is really holding me back here. It's not really the best. I also don't like that she's kind of okay to give up the center of the cage sometimes. She's coming in against Harding, who uh, is 6-4, and four, just beat Jesse Mealy. And, uh, you know, she has some power. Her striking is pretty solid. I feel like she can land some pretty hard shots here. She's got a nice jab. She's got a crisp right cross. Um, she's got good knees in the clinch. She, I feel like she's uh, more likely to take the center of the cage here and, uh, and land a whole bunch of volume. I think that she is more athletic. I think she's the better athlete. Um, and, you know, she was able to defend some takedowns against Mealy, which I like. Um, so I actually think that the underdog side, Janae Harding, is, uh, is the play here. I don't know if I'm going to end up actually putting any money on this, but uh, I do think that the underdog side is the side. Uh, Harding is good, and I think she might even have the advantage on the feet here. I feel like if she takes the center and lands some volume, she puts herself in a great position to win this fight. She will need to utilize some defensive wrestling here um, if she's going to get the win, but if she's able to defend some takedowns, land good volume, land hard shots, um, land the more you know uh, eye-popping shots for the judges, I feel like she probably wins this one. So... Um, I don't think I'm going to, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bet it, but uh, give me Janae Harding here. Moving on to Davion Franklin versus Tyler King at heavyweight. So Franklin is 2-0. and He's an undefeated pro out of Jackson Wink in New Mexico. Pretty small sample size, but he looks real good. Both of his wins have come in Bellator. He uh, He's big, he's long, he's got nice head movement, nice feints, and just really surprising kicks for a guy this size, man. You know, the man's an athlete. He's got nice Muay Thai. Um, he is an excellent wrestler. He can scoop guys up and slam them. He's got nice pressure, nice power. Um, and, you know, I just really like what I see so far out of Davian Franklin. Not too much to go off of thus far in his career, but I do like what I've seen. And uh, looking at Tyler King, he's 12-9. and nine. That record is uh, not great. Um, he's 40 years old. You don't really love to see that either. He's on a five-fight losing streak. He basically ticks every box for a guy you don't want money on. Um, but, you know, he's fighting out of Massachusetts, man. I used to live in Mass. And, uh, you know, those guys can, can be tough SOBs. And uh, he doesn't have great stand-up. A little bit unorthodox. A little bit, a uh, little bit herky-jerky. Um, he does have grappling, though. Could help him out on the ground here. But that heavy top pressure from Franklin, man, I just don't know. Um, and he, he, you know, he's weighed in like 10 to 15 pounds under the limit before, um, around like 240 to 50, like that range. Um, I think that could play in Franklin's favor for sure. I feel like that extra weight, if he gets it down and is in the, you know, top position going to be hard to move that guy off man so i'm going with davy and franklin here if for no other reason than the fact that i am not picking a 40 year old who lost five straight um against a rising talent training out of a major gym right i feel like franklin's going to be better here so give me davy on franklin moving on to valerie lareda and hannah guy at women's flyweight so lareda is 3-0 training an american top top team in florida i feel like this match is pretty much set up for her to win um, she pretty much has not been tested in any of her pro fights. Um, I don't think she's going to be tested here either. She's a good fighter. Uh, we don't really know how good. She is very marketable for Bellator. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in their favor to keep giving her matchups if they think she can win. And I think this is definitely a winnable matchup for her. Hannah Guy, don't want to take anything away from her, but uh, I feel like she got brought in to get beat up here. She hasn't really fought anyone great. She beat Vanessa Marie Grimes, who we saw Tabitha Ricci make very quick work of on LFA. Um, and I just think Lareda takes this. If Bellator didn't think she would win. I don't think they make the fight. So give me Valerie Lareda in this one. Um, so now we got Aviv Ghazali coming up against Sean Fenton at 155. So Ghazali is 5-0, and really good grappler. Five fights, five wins, five round one submissions. So... What more can you ask for, man? All his wins have come on Bellator. Every pro fight has been on Bellator. His gas tank is a complete unknown. We've never seen him pass the first round. Um, and as far as we can tell, he looks amazing. He looks like the best fighter ever, right? He, every fight he's been in, he's had a first round finish. Um, and then Sean Fenton here should be the bigger man here. Could maybe have a power advantage. He is a pretty good striker. Uh, he definitely wants this to stay standing, but that's just easier said than done. And I'm really not sure if he can keep this one standing, so... Give me Ghazali. I think he should get the win, but uh, I'm getting a flashback to when I said Waver Almeida <laughs> against Johnny Sato, man. Oh my goodness. 
Um, I thought that was going to be a round one knockout. It wasn't, and we saw that Almeida has no type of gas tank whatsoever. He also had no defensive grappling whatsoever either. Um, that's definitely not the case in terms of grappling for Ghazali, but the gas tank is questionable, and just the overall ability in deep waters is questionable, and I do feel like Sean Fenton is more live than what I thought Johnny Sato was against Almeida, so this is a pass, but uh, but give me Ghazali here. Now we have Sumiko Inaba coming up against Christina Katsikis at women's flyweight. So, uh, yeah, Inaba is 1-0. She had a really nice amateur career. And, you know, she just has a nose for smelling out finishes. She gets fights done. Um, she's a good striker. She's a competent grappler. She did have a loss as an amateur, but, you know, you kind of like to see that iron out the wrinkles early. She had a round one ground and pound TKO in her first pro fight on Bellator. And I think she's just going to outclass, out volume, outpower Kasikis on the feet. Um, Kasikis is, uh, you know, one and one. She beat Vanessa Marie Grimes, and I guess that's like the criteria now that Bellator is using to fight one of their prospects. you got to have a win over Vanessa Marie Grimes. Um, and, you know, Kasikis is fighting out of Massachusetts. You know, those mass people can be tough, man. But, uh, you know, she hasn't fought since 2019. Her stand-up is mm, kind of not good. I just think that Inaba is the better all-around fighter here. I think she has much more power, much better on the feet. I think that she probably can find another finish here. So moving on to Grant Neal versus Tyree Fortune. Not to be confused with Tyrell Fortune. Um, and this is going to be a light heavyweight. So Grant Neal is coming in 5-0. and 6-0 is an amateur, 4 finishes. 5-0 and is a pro, 3 finishes. 4 um, wins came on Bellator. You know, uh, wrestling background, great technique, very strong. Um, he's much more active of the two guys here. He had three fights last year. He comes ready to fight. He pushes the pace. He wants to lead. He's aggressive. And uh, I really value that, guys. Guys who are really willing to go out there and bring the fight to their opponent. I love to see that. Um, and Tyree Fortune is 5-0. and Also has a wrestling background. Extensive amateur career. 16 amateur fights. 14-2 and record. 5-0 and as a pro. 2-0 and on Bellator. He hasn't fought since 2019. Um, so he hasn't been as active, and I just feel like Fortune kind of looks for the perfect opportunity too much. And and Grant Neal's not going to wait for you, right? Grant Neal is going to come in there and be aggressive, do what he does. Um, I do like that Fortune has a big frame. He's got a nice nice size and reach advantage here. Um, but uh, ultimately, I'm going with Grant Neal. I think this is a close fight. Both of them are somewhat similar styles, but uh, I'm going with Neil. I just think his raw power, his wrestling ability, and his aggressiveness are going to be hard to deal with. And he's just been more active, so uh, so give me Grant Neal here. Moving on to Saad Awad coming up against Nate Andrews at lightweight. So Awad is 23-13. and 13. That's a massive amount of fights. He's very experienced. He's fought a who's who of, uh, of his division in Bellator, but uh, he's coming off four straight losses. And his fight against Mandel Nala, which ended in a no contest, that looked like it was going to be five losses, man. I know it got stopped early, so I don't want to jump to conclusions. But, uh, you know, Mendo Nalo was, was looking like he was going to win that one. Um, <laughs> Awad is dangerous in round one. Uh, he does tend to slow down a little bit, and he just becomes too hittable for my liking. And looking across the cage at Nate Andrews, he's 16-3. and three. He's a CES legend. Um, he most recently was on PFL where he, uh, he lost to Chris Wade two times. He put up a good fight. Um, but he just could not deal with that wrestling attack. He was able to beat Rashid Magomedov. I actually think that's a really good win. Um, and if this stand stays standing, uh, that's that's Andrew's bread and butter, right? If this stays standing, that's exactly what he wants. Um, he was supposed to fight Kili's Mocha and Goichi Yamauchi. Both of those fights got canceled. Both of those guys, I would say, are better than uh, than Sado Wadman. Um, so just the level of guys that Bellator was looking to put him up against, I feel like this is a bit of a step down. Um, I'm not super confident in Andrews, but Awad has just been bad lately, and I just feel like he's getting thrown to the wolves again here. I'm going to pass on this fight. Both guys are older, and I'm not overly confident, but give me Nate Andrews here. Uh, moving on to Christian Edwards and Ben Parrish at uh, light heavyweight. So Edwards is 4-0. He was 7-0 as an amateur, or sorry, 7-0 combined amateur and pro record. Um, six finishes between the two. But, uh, you know, he's never been past the second round. He's only 22 years old, um, so a little bit inexperienced. A couple of question marks about him, but he has looked really good. He's never lost, so what more can you ask for from him? He's going to be the bigger man in this fight. And Ben Parrish is 4-1. He hasn't fought anyone good, really, I wouldn't say. Hasn't fought since 2019. His fights in general are pretty spread out. Um, 
He's going to be at a size disadvantage here. This probably isn't the toughest guy that Christian Edwards has had to face, if I'm being honest. And uh, this is another one, man. I feel like Parrish is being fed to the Wolves here. I feel like Edwards is going to dominate him. So uh, give me Christian Edwards. Uh, moving on to Jaleel Willis and Macon Mendoza here. So this is at uh, at welterweight. Two LFA alums here. So we got Willis, LFA alum. Had some nice wins there. He was the champ in the welterweight division. Coming off five straight wins. Uh, you know... Just got a nice win on Bellator. He's got lots of uh, amateur experience. His career dates back to 2012. Um, you know, he's a great wrestler. His stand-up is improving each fight. And uh, looking at Mendoza, he's 11-4, and four, also an LFA alum, also was the champ in LFA at welterweight. So uh, that's something they have in common there. Um, he actually fought on the undercard of a Jaleel Willis uh, card in 2019. He had a really rough start to his LFA career, but, you know, he put it together and ended, ended up being champ. Um, he's won five straight now, all on LFA, and he was able to beat Batson Bro Dowdorj in his last fight. That's a really nice win. I feel like Dowdorj is uh, is a good fighter. I know Mendoza is training out of Black House MMA. He's a really good kickboxer, but he has to stay controlled. If he starts brawling, he starts swinging crazy, that's not his game. And sometimes he can get sucked into that a little bit, so... Um, if he wants to win this one, he can't do that. And if he does do that, that's just going to open up opportunities for Willis to get him down. I'm honestly surprised that he's the favorite in this matchup. I thought that Jaleel Willis would open up as the favorite. Um, it's a really close fight. It's probably the most competitive one on the card so far. Um, Tapology has 83% on Willis. I feel like Mendoza is very live. I'm kind of surprised to see that many people want Willis to win. I was kind of going back and forth myself, but... I like that plus money on Jaleel Willis, man, and, and you know the fact that he's the underdog. I thought he'd be the favorite. Him being the underdog just makes me like it that much more, so give me Jaleel Willis. Uh, moving on to Fabian Edwards coming up against Austin Vanderford at 185. So Edwards is uh, Leon Edwards' brother. He's going to be the much bigger man here, I feel like, a very long reach. You know, he's got a reach like a, like a light heavyweight or a heavyweight. Um, he won nine straight fights before losing his last fight to... Uh, Costello Van Stienis. and that's a tough fight, man. You know, Van Stienis is good. Um, Edwards was 10-0 and as an amateur. He is a hard hitter. He is a good kickboxer, and he's good from range. Um, and that, that's both a blessing and a curse in this fight, because um, if Vanderford doesn't close that distance, I feel like Fabian Edwards is, is going to, you know, that's his bread and butter fight, man, being at range and piecing him up. But if he does look to close that distance, I think that's going to be trouble for Fabian Edwards. Um, he does remind you a little bit of Leon on the feet. Um, he is a decent wrestler. Is he good enough to stop Vanderford? Maybe not. Is he good enough to ride it out until Vanderford gets gassed? Maybe. Is Vanderford going to gas? Uh, I feel like he's in good shape, man. I'm not too worried about that. Um, Vanderford is 10-0. He's a really good grappler. Um, you know, he had a nice win over Vinicius de Jesus his last fight. And, uh, you know, he's a great wrestler. Um, if he can get inside and take away Edwards' time, take away that space in the pocket, that'll be key in this fight. Um, hopefully he won't gas out because Edwards is definitely the better striker and he's very, he's long. He's much longer. So if, um, if Vanderford does happen to gas out, I feel like Edwards is going to run away with this one. But I think that Vanderford sticks to the game plan, takes his medicine, doesn't do anything crazy. I think he can win this fight. So I'm going to go with, uh, with Vanderford to get this done. I'm not really that confident in this one. I feel like it could go either way. Um, you know, if Edwards can stop the takedowns and, and get Vanifer's arms tired, I think he can run away with this in the later rounds. So, you know, I think that Edwards is very live. I definitely considered Edwards at plus money, but uh, I do think that Vanifer is the side here, and I think he'll be able to use his wrestling and get a win here. So, moving on to this co-main event, man, I'm excited for this one. This should be a great fight. Darian Caldwell versus Leandro Higo at Bantamweight. So, Caldwell just lost to AJ McKee on the featherweight world world. Grand Prix, um, and he's back down at Bantamweight now, so uh, his only losses within the last three years have come to uh, AJ McKee, and then twice to Horiguchi, so, you know, you, you can't really say too much about that, those are two creme de la creme guys um, in Bellator, so, you know, he's training out of Sanford MMA, I really like that camp, he actually beat Leandro Higo already, which is great, um, caught him with the round one guillotine, um, Caldwell is a great athlete, he has a bigger frame, He's got the height and reach advantage. Uh, you know, he's a pretty good wrestler. He does lots of good damage from top position. And um, he's just a powerful guy, man. It's really hard to stop him. And uh, Higo, you know, fighting at a, at a fight ready in Pitbull Brothers, two of my very favorite camps. That's just music to my ears when I hear that really nice win over Ricky Bandejas in his last fight. Um, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I had Bandejas uh, beaten him 
felt like an idiot. Um, and, you know, he has already lost to Caldwell before. And as good as he is as a grappler, Caldwell's pressure is really difficult to deal with. He's really powerful. And uh, I feel like he could threaten some subs on the ground, but, man, that top pressure from uh, from Caldwell is heavy. So I'm going to be going with Darian Caldwell here. I think the game plan is going to be the same as it was for the first fight. Higo has gotten better. I feel like I've seen lots of improvements in his game. I was really impressed with his uh, his victory over Bondejas, but the athleticism, the size, the power of Caldwell is the X factor, man, and I feel like that's what's going to secure him the win. So give me Darian Caldwell. And uh, moving on to the main event, we got Chris Cyborg coming in uh, against Leslie Smith here at uh, 145 for the second time. And, uh, you know, give me Chris Cyborg, guys. That's all I'm going to say about that one. <laughs> Best of luck this Friday night, guys. I know I'm a little bit behind on the videos uh, this week, but um, I'm going to try to get uh, both LFA and UFC out tomorrow. Hopefully, worst case scenario, I'll get UFC out on uh, on Friday. But thanks for keeping it locked in with me, guys. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch the videos, comment, subscribe, um, you know, interact with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, best of luck to you all, and I'll catch you on the next one.